God says, I'm not moving until you get so upset with your circumstance that you're willing to cry out and when you call on me, I will answer. What if I told you that a cry is the signal to God that I'm ready to be delivered? And the enemies that we see today, we shall see no more. I need every Moses online and every Moses in this building to shout, we are coming out. I just keep thinking he's not done with me yet. We're going to Genesis chapter 49. We got two verses of scripture we want to read this morning. In this month of witness. God is about to use you to tell the world how good he is. Your life is about to be an example of the miracle working power of God. How many believe that? Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 through 10. Jacob is dying, and he has gathered all of his sons around him in his last days to prophesy over them and to tell them what's going to become them after his death. He gets to his son, Judah, and this is the word he releases, releases to him. Judah, thou art he whom thine brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Lord, teach us when to praise you. Y'all waiting on me to preach, the scripture's preaching itself. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come or until the Lord comes back. And unto him, somebody say Judah, shall be the gathering, shall the gathering of the people be. I want to go to Revelation chapter number five. Verse 1 through 5. When you get it, say, I got it. John is sharing with us what he is seeing. He says, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? I wish y'all felt what I felt. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Last verse, and one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Can you tell somebody, stop crying? <laughs> Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Wow. The root of David hath prevailed to open the book 
and to loose the seven seals. He's crying and the elder said, stop crying. The thing you're already, the thing you're crying about has already been turned around. The Lion of Judah has already opened the book. Can I tell somebody what you're crying about has already worked out? Because the Lion of Judah is getting ready to work it out for you. I want to talk for just a few minutes from this thought, the Lion of Judah. Tell somebody he is the Lion from the tribe of Judah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am burdened and tasked in this season with making sure that as we seek to know who God is, that we have an understanding of who our enemy really is. And it's no fault of anybody other than the fact that when I was raised in church, they taught me on the level that they understood. But that's why the scripture says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And as I begin to study God, he began to show me why the devil hates me so much. To be honest with you, Satan is not his name. Satan is his assignment. He is an adversary. In fact, the name Satan means adversary. His job is to come against us. And the truth of the matter is, the devil is not his name. For the word devil just means a subject or a subordinate spirit. We call him the devil because he was the first to lead the insurrection. And the other little devils were influenced by him. So we call him the devil. But the truth of the matter is, the devil is not his name. His name is Lucifer. And the word Lucifer means light bearer or light bringer. I don't have time, but it suggests to us that at some point in time in his life, he was bringing light. They taught me that the reason the devil hates me is because I took his place as a worshiper which is true, but it is only partially true. The truth of the matter is, I not only took his place as a worshiper, but I took his place as one to bring light. Which suggests to me that every time I show up somewhere, I am shining light on who my God is. And the real reason he's mad is because I was made in his image. And Job and Isaiah both tell us that he wanted to be like God. So now you got kicked out of heaven because you wanted to ascend and be like God. And the Bible says you were beautiful. Lucifer was made one of the more beautiful angels, one of the more beautiful creatures you will ever see. And here it is, you get kicked out for wanting to be like God. And then you turn around and see God create this creature who is not made as beautiful as you. In fact, we were made from dirt. But he looks like God the same way you wanted to look like God. And now he has been tasked with bringing the light you used to bring. And so when I worship and when I praise, it is not just that I took his place as a worshiper, but something about my praise and something about my worship ought to shed light on God. Which is why Jesus tells them, let your light so shine that men may see your good works, but you will not get the glory. 
they will glorify. Some people came to help me preach. I'm looking for y'all in the, in the audience. But glorify your father, which is in heaven. So if I am to be a witness, I must understand why the devil hates me. He hates me because God created me a witness. Oh, Who will be a witness for my Lord? Isaiah said, I'll go send me. There are some of you in this room that don't understand why you are going through the things you're going through. It is because from the moment you were birthed in this earth, you were tagged to be a witness. You were tagged to open your mouth and let somebody know about the goodness of our God. You were tagged to let your light shine, which is the reason why when God blesses you, that hell comes shortly behind it. Listen, because the devil don't mind you being blessed as long as you keep your mouth closed about it. Blind Bartimaeus said, you can't shut me up. Because not only do I need a miracle, but I'll tell somebody who worked the miracle. Y'all don't want to have real church. So he created man and man becomes witness. Somebody say, I am a witness. My light is supposed to shine. When I give God praise, I am supposed to let somebody know who God is. And this was the reason why Lucifer came at Adam and Eve immediately. I wish I had time, but by the time you get through the history of this, and by the time you get all the way through the first 12 chapters of Genesis, the first 11 chapters of Genesis is showing God as a universal God who is the God of the universe, the God of all people. By the time you get to chapter 12 and he introduces Abraham into the scene, you begin to see God as not just the God of the universe, but he begins to narrow himself down. Can we talk just for a little while? And he begins to now identify not as the God of the universe, but as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Somebody say it with me. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, if it would have been me, I would have said, Miss Jackie, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. Because Israel was the more sanctified and the more saved version of Jacob. Are y'all with me in here? But by the time you get to Jacob's life and you get to the point where we're talking about Judah, the truth of the matter is that it has been extremely messy in this family. That it has been a sitcom to say the least. It, you, you're talking about green leaf. You got some material for Tyler Perry to use by the time you get to where we are talking about Judah. And it blew my mind because God chose to identify himself not by the saved version of, of Israel, but to identify himself as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, as messy as Jacob's life was. From the time he came out his mother's womb, him and his brother were warring in there and like any pregnant woman who has two babies inside of of them she wants to know what in the world is going on she's spoken to by God says you've got two nations on the inside of you mm, you got two nations on the inside of you and the younger shall rule over the older in fact, if you haven't been paying attention, those two nations have not stopped fighting because Israel and Palestine are still fighting to this day. When they come out, the Bible lets us know that Jacob grabs the heel of Esau, which really means you owe me. And twice when we're reading the story, we see Jacob trick his brother first out of his birthright. Because his brother's so hungry that he is willing to give up his birthright in order that he may get what he wants at that time. And can I pause parenthetically right here and tell you, you never make major decisions when you're hungry and thirsty. I'm not talking about for food. I'm talking about if, if you want it that bad, you might want to wait because 
Usually you don't make the right decisions when you're thirsty. The second time we see Jacob trick his brother is when his father is about to bless him. And his mother, who knows that he is supposed to get the blessing, tells him, hurry up. I'm going to cause you to trick your father. Put some hair on your arms. Put some hair around your neck. And let's go in and make your father think that you are your brother. And the Bible says that his father gives him the blessing. Here's what blew my mind, Pastor Rama. When his brother comes back from the field, I thought his father would say, I'm sorry, I gave the, brother, the blessing to the wrong brother and would reverse it, but he did not. Because you cannot reverse what God has decided to bless. I'm just trying to find who I'm talking to. This is crock pot cooking. We're not in the microwave. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you thought I wasn't supposed to get it. Once I'm blessed, you can't take it back. You can't. Jacob finds himself in some mess because he goes to Laban running from his brother, meets Laban's daughter, Rachel, and falls in love with her. The Bible says she's so fine, he starts crying. Now, I, I haven't seen a few in my day. I ain't never met one that made me start crying. Not on sight. He says, I got to have her. He says, I will work seven years for her. And seven years he works. And on the night that he's supposed to reap his reward, come on, brothers. The Bible says that Laban tricks the trickster and sends Leah, who the Bible calls tender eye. You can interpret that how you want to interpret it, but it's not the one he just worked seven years for. Hear me when I tell you, Rachel had to be fine because when he finds out that he is tricked, he says, I'll work another seven years. Y'all don't want to have no church with me in here. Now, women, this is not a class, but if you ever find a brother who is willing to work 14 years, Lord, help me. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Leah was hated. Leah was hated by Rachel and Jacob. And because she's hated, God blesses her. <laughs> You're running from hate, but you don't realize what it does. Bible says God begins to bless her. Can I help somebody in this room? She begins to give forth children, but her focus is in the wrong place. But what happens is in the midst of all of this mess, please hear me. In the midst of all of this, because I could go further and talk to you about how Jacob or how Rachel and Leah end up getting into a contest with one another. And begin to lend out their husband to one another. This was some messy stuff. And in all of this mess, God is blessing Rachel with fruit. That means something. She has her first son and his name is Reuben. Reuben. And she says, now my husband will see me. But it didn't help. She has her second son, whose name is Simeon, says, because now my son, stay with me, my, now my husband will hear me. <laughs> stay with me. He, she has her third son, and she says, now will my husband join himself to me. She does not know this, Pastor Hammond, but what she is literally doing is giving us an Old Testament picture of the salvation process. I need you to stay with me here because faith which is sight only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God I must have an experience with faith once I hear the word of God and that is the only way I can join myself to God who am I talking to she doesn't realize this, but she's giving birth to something that will be generational while she is being hated. Can I talk to somebody who is in the midst of an uncomfortable situation? 
and you don't realize while you are being criticized and ostracized that you're giving birth to something that is generational. Can you tell somebody next to you that in the midst of everything that I'm going through, I'm giving birth to something that's going to live longer than me. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room. She gives birth to the beginning of what would be the 12 tribes of Israel. But it is a concealed picture of the salvation process. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, hearing, seeing, and joining, and then comes Judah. Judah is when she takes her eyes off of her husband and her sister and says, now will I praise the Lord. The reason this is important is because we think when the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, it means that we just throw God anything. But the truth of the matter is, I praise him based upon my cognitive experience. It's the reason why people can be feeling the presence of God and you can feel God so heavy in the room. And you're looking at somebody that ain't moved yet. You got to check their pulse because everybody has not had the experience with God that you have. Because I praise God because I heard and saw something that not everybody heard and saw. Are y'all with me in here? Dogs don't have a soul to save, but their bark praises him. Cats don't have a soul to save, but their meow praises him. The angels only know light and they only know darkness. But I'm not an angel. God made me a little lower than the angels, but 1 Corinthians tells me that I will judge angels. But I have a song the angels cannot sing. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Would you tell somebody in this room, the angels can't praise them as good as I can? Because God has not done for them what he has done for me. I'm trying to tell somebody that we ought not have to pump and prize you, prime you to praise God. Because the truth of the matter is you come through enough mess yourself. That nobody ought to pray, tell you you got to praise God. That God has overlooked a lot of your faults. And met a lot of your needs. There should not be a dog that can bark louder than your hallelujah. There should not be a cat that can meow louder than your hallelujah. And if these don't praise them, the Bible says the rocks will cry out. But it is a tragedy for a rock to cry out when I'm the one that was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me now safe am I every time I come and think about the goodness it's not a cliche every time I think about it uh, my eyes turn into rain Uh, my hands go up and I tell him thank you Judah is birthed out of mess. And it blows my mind, Derek, that God would identify himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when Jacob was a no good trickster. But can I ask you a question? Who will praise him more than somebody who God has seen you through mess? I don't know who I'm talking to. The one who is forgiven much loves much. Y'all don't want to have church. The reason I praise God like I do is because I remember when. And the truth of the matter is, if it was a competition, you wouldn't beat me because he's seen me through too much. In fact, I shouldn't be in the lighthouse. I shouldn't have been able to drive my car to the lighthouse. I should have been dead. And if they played the movie of my life, 75% of this room would vote me out of being on the stage today. 
but God somehow identifies with messy people. I wish I had somebody in here. Can I free you today? Because people will look at you and try to judge what you've been through. But I just need you to remind them that God is the God of my mess. And he is the God of my storm. And he always builds greatness in messy situations. After Judah is born, we get one chapter on Judah by himself. And it is Genesis chapter 38. And in that one chapter, it is a bad look. It is Judah lying with a harlot. It is Judah getting a prostitute pregnant. And the rest of the book of Genesis, after giving us that one look at Judah, that one bad look at Judah, the rest of Genesis is not talking so much about Judah. It moves into talking about his younger brother, Joseph. Help me here, Holy Spirit. The reason it talks about Joseph is because Joseph is a type of Christ. Help me. And so it is giving us an Old Testament picture of what Christ is going to do in the New Testament. So even though he introduces us to Judah... Joseph begins or becomes the one or he is a picture of the lion that will come from Judah. Come here somebody. What he's teaching us and proving to us is that he will use irregular and jacked up people so that he can prove to you that the promises of God are yea and amen. Because if you had to go through all of the lineage of the 12 sons of Jacob, you would not have picked Judah to be the one that Jesus would come from. But God says, I always want to make sure I pick the one that you overlooked. Can I talk to some people in here? Leah was overlooked, but she kept giving birth. Leah was not preferred by her husband or her sister, but she was picked by God. Judah was a mess, but he was chosen by God. If you don't have the message yet, I'm trying to tell somebody in the room that it doesn't matter how dirty you are, God picked you. And the reason why you are about to do something amazing in your family, the reason you're about to do something amazing on the earth is because God always overlooks your fault to see your need. Can you tell somebody in this room, uh, I may have been messed up, I may have been jacked up, that I may have been everything that nobody wanted to choose, but God picked me. Uh, Everything about my life said not him, said not her, but God picked me. Uh, My life didn't start out so great, but God picked me. I I was in the streets, I've been on drugs, Uh, I've been in different women and men's bed, but God picked me. I can't help it you don't like it he picked me I I can't help it you I wouldn't have been your choice but he picked me I I have not I didn't even have a vote in the matter I just came to the world and realized I've been picked for something great and the problem that I'm having is that I didn't pick myself so I couldn't choose what I went through I just know I got this anointing and anointed people are crazy Where's my room? Because some of y'all acting funny. What? I said I got this anointing and anointed people are crazy. I know if you don't understand what I'm saying, you're probably not anointed. Don't worry about it. We're getting ready to have a meeting inside the meeting for just the anointed people. When you're anointed, you got all kind of stuff you're going through. And, and you need somebody to tell you what it is. <laughs> You don't really know what it is. You just think that something's wrong with you. But until you find another anointed person to tell you nothing's wrong with you, you just got oil on your life. The reason you're going through what you're going through is because God's hand is... And when you're anointed, you try to give it back to God all the time. Lord, I'm too crazy for this. I can't do it. 
I'm too nasty for this. I can't. I cuss too much. I, I, I just, I can't do this. God said, but I picked you. He tells us, as jacked up as Judah and even his daddy and his mama were, watch it what he says. He says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter is the staff of a king. I'm trying to help somebody. In other words, I didn't just give you a regular blessing. I gave you the blessing of rulership. This is why the devil is so mad at you because he can't understand how you got so much authority when you're a liar. Okay, let me go to this. He's still trying to figure out how do you walk so heavy in the spirit when you still got that little struggle that you're trying to overcome. You, you are trying to overcome it. You're not living in it, but it's still on you. And because he's an accuser of the brethren, it is his job to peep your game. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So he's always watching you and trying to take what you have done back to God. But he's scratching his head trying to figure out how do you have the authority? But can I tell you the authority is not mine. I walk in the power of the one who saved me. And the reason why I keep showing up to give the devil a black eye is because I didn't give this authority to myself. This authority came from God. And can I tell you the next thing? That the authority he gave back to you, God, hear me, for the 150 of y'all who know when to praise God, God is not an Indian giver. I'm not going to give you something and take it back. He said, Judah, I know you're a mess. I know your daddy was a trickster. I know you laid with a harlot. I know that you're no good to your core, but I'm giving you authority and it's never going to leave. I told you to tell your neighbor every time you touch them that power was going to come through them. Touch them for the first time and tell them, neighbor, the blessing that is on your life it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I know I said ain't. Y'all preach it like I gave it to you. Tell them, neighbor, stop letting the devil play games with your mind. You're anointed. You're gifted. You have power. And it ain't going nowhere. When I wake up tomorrow, I'll still be anointed. On Christmas, I'll still be anointed. Those of you waiting on me to fall, prepare to be sick of me. Because 2025, guess what? I will stick. I'll still be anointed. He says, Judah, the scepter is not going to leave your hand. It's not going to leave your hand. These 12 tribes that come out of you, he says, they're all going to bow to you. Watch what happens. What happens is you can be seated. Give me just a few more minutes and we'll be in church. What happens is that a sibling rivalry breaks out. You know brothers fighting against brother and the kingdom Pastor Rama, splits. The kingdom splits ten tribes in the northern region two tribes in the southern region ten big old tribes to two little tribes but Jesus gets his name not from the ten bigger tribes but from the two smaller tribes the two tribes that split in the southern kingdom was important because it's about to help you shift your praise what needs to happen from today is your witness can never be the same when you open your mouth and praise after today you're praising according to the southern tribes because the two tribes that were in the southern region were just Judah and Benjamin 
somebody say Judah, Judah. and Benjamin. Judah means now will I praise God. <laughs> but hear me, some people are trying to give God Judah with no Benjamin. Let me help you. Because Benjamin means son of the right hand. The right hand of God is God's authority. So what happens is when I praise God from my cognitive ability, it has authority to go along with it. In other words, I'm not blindly praising God. I'm praising God because I see something you don't see. And it gives me authority. While I'm in the middle of my mess, I see that weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. And it gives my praise some authority. Are y'all talking to me in here? The devil feel like he don't have to listen to you unless you come with Benjamin. But when I come, I never come by myself. My little brother Benjamin is always with me. Benjamin means that when I open my mouth and shout hallelujah, demons have to back up. I'm talking to somebody in here who's been praising God. And Judah has been good. But God sent me here to prophetically tell you the next time you open your mouth, Benjamin is coming with Judah. God said, I'm getting ready to give your praise the kind of authority that shifts whatever you're dealing with. Uh-oh, I just felt that preaching thing sneak up on me. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, when I show up, I'm never by myself. I always got my Judah and I always got my Benjamin. And if you keep on messing with me, I'm getting ready to lift my hands and open my mouth. And when I give God this next praise, wickedness is leaving my house. With this next praise, my uncles that are addicted are about to be free. With this next praise, my marriage is coming together. With this next praise, every demon that's been hanging around my doorstep is getting ready to leave me alone. I need somebody watching online to type in the screen, I got my Benjamin with me. Somebody in Lighthouse Church, open your mouth and let Judah and Benjamin rise. Tell somebody my praise will never be the same. Come on, tell them my praise will never be the same. I'm done talk, depending on Sharon and Kafia. I'm getting ready to change the way I praise God. In fact, when I get up in the morning, when I get ready to brush my teeth, Judah and Benjamin, when I get in my car, start the car, Judah and Benjamin, all the way to work on Monday, Judah and Benjamin. In fact, when I get in my cubicle, I need three chairs. I don't care if you don't know what it's for, give me three chairs. Why you need three chairs? Oh, I got Judah and Benjamin with me. I'm getting ready to switch it up because praise is the only reason I'm here. My praise is the only thing that's saving my life. Somebody open up your mouth and tell God praise. It's here now that we get the name king of Jews. The word Jew was a word that was ascribed to the two southern tribes. The ten northern tribes were known as Israelites, but the southern tribes were known as Jews. And when they put Jesus on the cross, they thought they were mocking him by calling him the king of the Jews. I wish I had somebody in here. But they didn't realize by calling him the king of the Jews, they were prophetically speaking that he was from the tribe of Judah. And Jesus was killed by his own tribe. Y'all gonna talk to me up in here. And from the ashes of tricks 
and from the ashes of sibling rivalry and from the ashes of murder and rape and harlots arises a lion Lord have mercy from all of this mess from all of this turmoil from all of this addiction all of the mess in my life all of the things they tried to make me think God couldn't forgive me for arise as a lion I wish I was preaching in the prison cause y'all funny acting I bet some prisoners would eat this up after all that I've been through you mean to tell me there's a lion coming out of my mess a lion the majestic representation of a king the reason I get so confused by people who act like they don't owe God a life of praise I get confused by folk that act like they shouldn't give God a lifestyle of praise the reason I get so confused destiny is because you don't realize it's from your mess that you get majesty if it were not from your mess you wouldn't have no authority y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here the reason why my praise has authority is because Tasha I have survived so much oh my god the devil knows that if he could have killed me I'd be dead already so what does the Bible say? He moves forth as a roaring lion. He not really a lion. He ain't got no teeth. He just practices the roar. But tell somebody, I ain't scared of him. Because I got the real lion on my teeth. The Old Testament beautifully concealed. What the New Testament then reveals. What you see in the Old Testament is the spiritual or the physical representation of what comes out of your mess. You see Jacob giving birth to all of these children. Twelve sons that would end up being the pillar of our Christian belief born out of family drama born out of sibling rivalry born out of murder and rape 12 tribes but by the time you get to the book of revelation you're looking at a marriage between the natural and the spiritual now God says, I don't want to just show you what's happening naturally. I need to reveal to you what happens spiritually when I bring you through mess. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Because there's somebody in this room, you don't even consider yourself a heavyweight in the spirit. But I need you to understand by the time you leave this room, that God has made you a heavyweight in the spirit. You don't have to preach like Paul. You don't have to pray like Silas. You don't have to sing like the praise team. God said, I need you to understand just because of what you survived, you carry weight. And this is why the devil doesn't want to see you coming. This is why people who are jealous want to keep you out of certain rooms. Because like Saul, when he looked at David, he saw his anointing. And he attacked him because of what he saw. Can I tell you, people see in you what you don't see in yourself. God says, I am making you into something that when you walk in the room, hell gets nervous. <laughs> that you are an atmosphere shifter. That because of all of the things that God has dragged you through, something is not just happening in your body. It's not just happening in the natural. It's happening in the spirit realm. The struggle in the natural produces something in the spirit. 
And Revelation chapter 5 is a peek in the spirit to see how God is working for you. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I want you to know and see how God is working on your behalf. Come on, tell them God's about to show you today how he is working on your behalf. This revelation, John writes it on the island of Patmos. Somebody say Patmos. The word Patmos, as I hurry to a close, is an unfruitful place. Somebody say it's an unfruitful place. He has been persecuted and sent to the island of Patmos in order that he might die there. This word persecution means that he is suffering for what he believes. It is different than just suffering. Persecution means that you believe something. And can I tell you that part of the reason the devil is after you is because he wants you to let go of what you've been believing. He is sent there because he is being persecuted. He believes something about God and he's been sent there to die. And he's sent to a place that is known as an unfruitful place. This is for the 200 of y'all that have figured out how God works. He's in an unfruitful place. Are y'all hearing me? But has the most fruitful revelation known to man. Y'all missed it, so I'll say it again. He was sent there to be persecuted. And they sent him to a dried up unfruitful place. A place where he wasn't supposed to do nothing but die and while he is being persecuted and while he is sitting there in a death sentence in an unfruitful place God gives him the most fruitful revelation known to man all right, it used to take me a, a little while too so I'm going to say it one more time I said you were supposed to be dead you are being persecuted because of what you believe <laughs> And the sentence is that nothing fruitful is supposed to come out of you. But while you are in the midst of a death sentence, God is about to give you the most fruitful season of your life. I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm telling you that while you are wondering when it's going to turn around for you, while you are wondering why you're in a season that seems like nothing is working for your good the devil has been messing with your mind telling you it's because you're so messy it's because of all the mistakes you made can I get a witness in the room but do me a favor for the second time today put your hand in your neighbor's hand for the second time and tell your neighbor say neighbor I need you to understand that God is about to defy the devil and he's about to give you one of the most fruitful seasons of your life y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here if that neighbor didn't praise God find you another neighbor and tell that neighbor say neighbor I need you to hold on a little while longer because while you are being persecuted while you're in the toughest season you can remember God said it's about to be a fruitful season for you every coin has two sides I got one side that says I've been through hell one side says that it's been tough for me but tell somebody God's about to flip the coin and I'm getting ready to prosper I'm getting ready to see God like I never John says I saw a book and when I saw the book the book was closed and nobody could open the book I'm in a season of persecution I'm in a season of unfruitfulness and I'm a little emotional now because I'm seeing a vision and I'm feeling what I'm seeing and John begins to weep who's been weeping in this season John begins to cry because some of the stuff I'm going through I can't even tell y'all about it can I get a witness in here 
some of the things I've been through. I just got to come and cry about it. And But God told me to tell you the same thing that the elder told John. He said, John, stop weeping because the Lion of Judah has prevailed to open the book. Do me a favor in here and tell somebody, stop weeping because the Lion of Judah has done the hard thing in your life. Y'all ain't saying it. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say stop weeping because the Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open what was closed. Doors have been closed in your face but thanks be unto God there is a lion that can open doors that no man can shut things have been taken from me and I've been crying but thanks be unto God there is a lion from the messiest tribe that can open and can redeem the time somebody 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 open your mouth and tell somebody next to you tell them neighbor oh neighbor hold on just a little while longer because I've got a word for you. Tell them neighbor, weeping may endure for just one night, but I feel God getting ready to open something for you. Tell them, stop your weeping. The lion is on his way. Stop your weeping. The king is coming to your house how do i get the king to come to my house with my judah with my praise open your mouth in here open your mouth in here open your mouth in here open your mouth in here, mouth in here. and watch god work it out watch god fix it for you Watch God turn it, turn it around. Testify to somebody. Tell them, neighbor, he is the God of my mess. And my responsibility is to give him the glory. Because he blessed me while I was in my mess. Testify to somebody. He's the God of my miracle. I got to praise him because the Lion of Judah has been my mind regulator. The Lion of Judah has been my lily in the valley. The Lion of Judah has been my bright and morning star. The Lion of Judah has been my bridge over troubled waters. Tell somebody the Lion of Judah is on his way. Give God the glory in this room. I said give him glory. Lift up your hands. O ye gates and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord strong and I said who is the King of Glory, the Lord God, strong and mighty. The problem is you don't know 
who God was talking to when he said lift up your heads the head was not the heads of people the head is the hinge that's on a door the door that won't open so God spoke to it and said come off the hinge and the door opened what he was really saying is if the door won't open I'll kick it down open your mouth and say the king is coming the king is coming the king is coming yeah yes I said the king is coming if you open up your mouth watch the king come in if you give him the glory watch the king come in watch him work it out I'm getting ready to move but wrap your arm around your neighbor and tell them neighbor the king is getting ready to come in tell them this next praise is a praise to invite the king in and if the door won't open if the devil tries to keep him out he's taking the door off the hinges tell him when I praise him now there is some authority behind my praise and the doors are getting ready to open tell your neighbor get ready to praise him get ready for the king to come are you ready are you ready open your mouth and watch the king The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king. He is lion from the tribe of Judah. He is the stone that the builders rejected. He is the chief cornerstone. And he deserves. He deserves my praise. Have you any rivers that you cannot cross? Have you any mountains that you cannot funnel through? I'm telling you, God specializes in things impossible. And he's able. And he's able. I don't even care about y'all. And he's able. He's able. He's able, able, able. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. Oh yes, yes. God is able to do anything but fail. Stop praising him regular. Open your mouth and let the devil know we serve a miracle worker. We serve the offspring of David. We serve. The devil wants you quiet because healing is in your mouth. The devil wants you silent because your son's deliverance is in your mouth. The devil wants you quiet because your marriage is hinging on your mouth. Open your mouth. And the lion, the lion, the lion. He's on his way. He's on his way. In three, two, one. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus, come Lord Jesus, hey, 
from your heel. Somebody's about 10 seconds from your breakthrough. I see angels in the balcony that if you would just give them everything you got, there's an angel stirring your water. Somebody lift your hands and say, I'll never be bound again. He's the God of my storm. He's the God of my mess. In fact, the strongest message comes from the biggest mess. You're looking at somebody whose life has been a mess. But the lion from the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. And the elder told John, the reason you need to stop weeping for the 300 of y'all that will give God a shout when I say this. Because I'm telling you, there's a move about to hit this room. The reason he told him to stop weeping, listen, is because the book was already open. I need you to know it's already done. I said it's already done. I said it's already done. You're not waiting till you get home. You're not waiting till you hit the parking lot. Did you hear me? I said it's already. It's already. Already done. Oh. Oh. Already done. Hey, Lift your hands. Already done. Already done. I feel such a powerful anointing in this room. Already done. I want to move, but I want to give you a chance to run to this altar. If you believe God is opening something for you. Already done. Listen, don't come if you're going to be quiet. God said, this is a well, a time for you to come wailing. If you're going to be quiet, don't come. I need you to come with your mouth open and your hands lifted because it's already done. That's it, come on. The lion has prevailed to open the book. The book is already open. The book is already open. The book is already open. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. You're not coming to get it done. It's already done. Your hands are lifted. And you're coming here to seal it. 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 Musicians, I want y'all to follow me in just a minute. You're coming here to seal it. Because when you leave this altar, you're releasing everything that the devil tried to tell you was going to keep you from your miracle. But God said, give it to the lion, give it to the lion. Give it to the lion. Give it to the lion. I'm going to count to three and I only do that to mark time so we can have unity. There's a few of you in the balcony that really need to press your way down here. I know it's far, but you need to come. And I'm really waiting on you. We're going to mark time. When I count to three, we're going to mark time. And when I get to three, Musicians, there is a release that needs to happen at this altar from your belly. 
there is a well. Men, there's something you got to let out that will let the devil know my tribe may be messy, but God swears by me. God identifies himself with my mess. I need y'all to get your hearts and minds ready, even those of you that are in your seat. This building is going up in a travail. Where are the women that weep between the porch and the altar? Where are the wailing women? Women, you're carrying something. You're carrying the birth of a vision. You're carrying something that you got to deliver. One. Two. I need you to get ready to release. Three. Open your 